we're back again doing some updates, just a continuation of what it is that was there before. So, uh, working on a 2011 BMW 328i X Drive, and as it stands right now, we just updated the ZBE, which is the iDrive controller. All right. Um, as it stands right now, this update was just completed. Just, just, just completed. I apologize for not walking through before, but it's quite a simple procedure to do. Um, as it stands, I have pulled the ZB numbers from INPA, which I will show you how to do afterwards. And I have WinKFP here, which is what I use. As it stands right now, I'm using a KD can cable to do the coding, right? Um, so we will go through in INPA and later after that ISTA to show what it is that has been done, right? So right now, we're going to head to comfort mode, right? As a matter of fact, let me... Let me close WinKFP completely. So, you get to your laptop, you would open WinKFP. You would definitely need your configuration to be done, importation of assembly line data, and so on and so forth. You hit comfort mode, update ZUSB, and right now we're going to be updating the CID. So, here we can just press C, scroll down, and look for the CID now. If my memory serves me right, I have CID 90. Now, how is it, you may ask, do you know which CID it is that you have? Well, you can do it in one or two ways. You can either use ISTA and look at the control unit tree and see which variant is inside your car. Or you can go to NCS Expert. For this, I will have to close WinKFP so I can show it to you. So you go NCS Expert, you load your profile using that one. And you go through the necessary procedure to connect to your car based on the chassis and the module that it's going to read everything from. So there we have our VIN and all of that. We hit back, process ECU, and we're looking for the CID. We say, okay, and as we can see in the SGBD name here, CID 90, all right? Therefore, that we know that is the ECU family. So we can head back to WinKFP, and we say comfort mode, update ZUSB, and we scroll and search for CID 90. Then we hit OK. ECU family is selected. And then from there I can add my VIN. A77261010. Hit OK. Done. Program ZB update. It will say here. It's going to keep ZB number the same, but it is going to update it. We say OK. Tells us that it can be programmed one time, no problem, okay. That was a quick pro pro program there. Um, I know you can't see it, but on my side, the iDrive screen just went blank a while ago. And now it is going to start programming it. So this may take some time. So let us see how this goes. I'm not going to fast forward anything. I'm going to leave it in real time so that you can all see what takes place. Just to give some perspective also, this is the longest I've ever had to wait to see anything on this car programmed. Um, I have not done any programming to the iDrive itself. Um, I've not done any programming to the um, DME or anything like that. I've done the roof function center. I've done the passive go system. I've done the um, fuel pump. I have done. I have done the heater module. I believe I don't remember if I did. I know that I did the junction box. I did the multiple restraint system which is the earbag 
and a few other modules but i have not touched any of the major ones like the dme and the iDrive. No, i will show you in easter when i am finished that certain modules you don't necessarily want to touch because updating those modules over kd can is going to be very problematic um anything that is on the most ring which is a fiber optic ring that is what you would definitely do not want to touch any at all unless you are using an icon right uh not the clone but the genuine icon you can maybe get away with also using the vcx se which is a tool that i will soon be reviewing but over KD, can you can update anything on the PT line and the K line. Those I will show you in Easter when it is that this programming is through. Just for reference sake, I am actually using a M1 MacBook Air with a one terabyte external drive that is formatted to APFS running parallels. And that is what I'm using to do this job. So for those persons who want any insight on how it is to set up all of these BMW tools, on their MacBooks so they don't have to go out and buy a dedicated Windows device then I can provide you that information also right. but it is very possible to do all of your coding your programming your diagnostics and so on on a MacBook and believe me nine times out of ten it is faster than a Windows device all right as you can see, we are almost finished. Uh, cars made a little bit of noise there. Right now it is going through its final stages of doing its programming. We should soon get a pop-up to say that the programming is complete if all went well. Let us hope that that is what takes place. And there we go. So the USB update programming is okay. That's always a welcome sign. And our iDrive screen has successfully come back on. God is good. All right, now we should expect to have some errors after this. So what I'm going to do now, we can get rid of all of this because it is no longer necessary. We have updated all the necessary modules that has been asked of us. All right. Now, if we are supposed to open INPA, I will show you. As you see, we're connected here. I will show you how it is that we read the user information field to have gotten those Z USB numbers and so forth. So our chassis is the E90, and we go to the functional jobs that is all right and right here we have uif which is f3 user information field we go there and it will read it out and here we go as you see cid it says okay updated to the new number you see our vin and it is now at 2023 all right um prior to that we had also done the ZBE, which as you see is also K okay, updated to the new number. There's the VIN 2023. Now, the FAS is the seat module. Um, I don't believe that there is any updates available for it. Right. But it is possible that we can have the module representing the same VIN number here if needs be. Right. So the CCC. The mask CCC, the most gateway, um, this, the tell MULF, all of those modules right there, you don't want to touch unless it is a case that you have the icon. Now, the dynamic stability control I will be updating as soon as I do 
some brake work on this car and get the brake sensors replaced and that kind of thing. I don't want to do any updates to or any programming to the modules to update them unless the module has no errors inside there. Now, with that being said, we can close here and we can go to ISTA. And in ISTA, we will show you the control unit tree. We're going to have a shit ton of errors inside there, most likely, that we will have to clear. Um, the only module that should have or should come back with any errors inside there is supposed to be the dynamic stability control module because of the lack of brake sensors. So let us get connected here and we will see what codes it is that came after programming and how to proceed where that is concerned. This may take a few minutes actually because communication over KD can is not necessarily the fastest per se, but we should get quite a lot of information here. All right. Now, this is another thing that a lot of people are quite intrigued about where the eye level is concerned. So, the eye level factory is 10, 12, 501, and it is still at the same, even though we updated the modules. Now, if we wanted to update the I level actual to bring it to a newer date then the easiest thing for us to be able to do with that is actually to go into tool 32 and we could do a update at that point um, I may do that considering that I have updated most of the modules to 2023 um, it is not really vastly important per se but it is beneficial if the car is going to be going back to BMW at any given point in time for software updates because they will then know that modules have been updated at some point in time, right? So I will maybe do that at some point in time after I have sorted out the DSC and that kind of thing. Now as it stands, we have an issue in the CAS, FRM, CIC, which is what we just programmed here. Um, we have also programmed the ZBE, which would be the controller here. But we have no issues there, that's good. And we have one in the fuel pump control module and the DME, of course. So let us display the fault memory and see what is taking place. And there we go. This is all quite normal after processing. As you can see, front uh, pad rear sensor and the rear pad rear sensor. And there is a permanent existing fault there. All of the others are saying no except for, well, DSC again. Uh, so there is no encoding issues that are taking place here. All right. Therefore, we can easily go through and say delete fault memory, and we will do so. All right. 
right now it wants a terminal switch over we will do that all right and we turn the car back on now if you were on a f chassis or g chassis or i chassis it would automatically do this especially if you were using an icom it would also do this but considering that i am using uh kd can then it does not do the automatic changeover and there we go all control modules except the dsc is in green and if we look back at the fault memory then we know that it is only the brake pad sensors that are actually bad all right and that is completely fine and normal so if we go back to the control unit tree this is what i was saying so as you see, we updated the control information display. Control information display is on the can line, as you can see right here, the K line, right? Um, all these modules here are on the K line. So the FRM is on its own, own line and all of these other modules, the instrument cluster, the central um, information display, your rain light sensor, roof function sensor, park distance sensor, so on. All of these are on one CAN bus line. Now, the problem is when you come over here, your mask CCC, as you see there, which is the car information computer and the gateway for it. And all of these are on a CAN line. Yes, it's still on the K line. However, what it is that you have happening is they all connect also to the most ring. So this green ring is a, is a fiber optic cable that runs through the entire vehicle. And this can only be connected or updated over ICOM successfully. If you try doing it with KD can it will fail. So as it stands, I have updated the FRM long ago. Um, all of these modules here except for the Combi and the CAS is it that i have so this is not a module that you can update the rain light sensor apparently it doesn't even show up any at all but i've updated the roof function sensor um, as you can see this is a black line which means that this is integrated into the roof function center so it would have been upgraded as an entire module or updated as an entire module um i don't believe the seat module can be updated per se um the CAS and the combi are the only modules on this that i have not updated if memory serves right um i've updated the frm i've updated the junction box i have not updated the dme but i have done i have done the vtg which is trans the, the transfer box and i've also done the fuel pump and when i do the brakes i will do the dynamic stability control so it's 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 actually very simple people right very 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 simple to understand very simple to update and that kind of thing it is not terribly difficult or complicated right it takes a little bit of patience a little bit of understanding of how it is that the car works and how it communicates right so if you have any questions queries concerns you can reach out in the comments or you can shoot me an email and from there, then I am out.